All right, it's 8.35 and we have a couple members that are stuck in traffic on 131 along with our drain commissioner who has a few items on the agenda. <laughs> So we'll take it a little slow, but um, I want to make the best use of everybody's time. So let's call the meeting to order. Let me scroll up here so I can get to the top of my agenda. All right. I promise I am computer savvy. Okay, so the first item on the agenda for the Finance and Physical Resources Committee today is public comment. Is there anyone from the public who'd like to speak? Seeing none, <laughs> our next item is the consent agenda. So the consent agenda includes the approval of the minutes from December 6th and also auditing of checks and purchase order activity. Could I get a motion to approve the consent agenda? Motion. Support. Moved and supported. Any questions or comments on the consent agenda? Anything that needs to be changed? All right, seeing none. All those in favor, please say yes. 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 All those opposed, please say no. Motion passes. Our next item on the agenda comes from the health department. It's the Blue Cross Blue Shield of Michigan Foundation Children's Special Health Care Services Grant. Do you want to read that? Oh, yes. <laughs> I do want to. Let me see. I got to get. It's a few pages down. We're still getting used to having our. Back to Electria. Yeah, no paper. Okay, here we go. I'm there. Except, uh, action requested, except $30,000 in grant funds from the Blue Cross Blue Shield of Michigan Foundation for increasing capacity in children's special health care services. The health department has been notified by the Blue Cross Blue Shield of Michigan Foundation that was awarded a grant in the amount of $30,000 for increasing capacity in children's special health care services. The health department will combine the Blue Cross Blue Shield of Michigan Foundation funding with funding from the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services to provide mental health services by a medical social worker to clients and families enrolled in the Children's Special Health Care Services Program. Approximately 600 clients will receive mental health services during the 24-month funding period. The Health Department will request appropriations for the grant award and subsequent budget processes. Per the county's fiscal policy on grants, contracts, and donations, the board has granted the Finance and Physical Resources Committee authorization to approve acceptance of grant funding over $25,000. The grant period is April 1, 2023 to March 31, 2025. Corporate Council will review and approve all documents as to form. All right, thanks, Al. Is there a motion for this item? Motion. Moved by Commissioner Sparks. Support. Support by Commissioner <coughs> Wooden. Any questions or comments on this? Commissioner Wooden. Thank you, Chair. Um, so I, I'm seeing here the um, $30,000 award that we're receiving and the uh, estimate that approximately 600 clients will receive mental health services during the 24-month period. Now, I, I know my, my own spouse's caseload, and it's far less than 600, and um, I also know my, my uh, spouse's wage. And so I'm, I'm wondering how we're expecting to see 600 clients with that amount of money and how much is coming from DHHS. So what's the total budget, and how do we uh, what what determine that 600 uh, person uh, metric? Thank you. Good morning. And for those who don't uh, know me, I'm Adam London, director of the health department, and I'm here this morning with Gail Brink. She's a deputy health officer, uh, and acts as our, our chief financial officer, if you will. So I'll let Gail address the financial question. Um, as far as the the total cost of the position. Um, about 70,000 or 70% 70 of it is coming from MDHHS, 30% is from Blue Cross. As far as the 600 goes, this is um, a position that's going to help with navigation. So it's not actually seeing, I mean, it's seeing the clients, but it's getting them, navigating them to the services they need. So it's, it's not a huge time commitment and it's over a two year period. So it would be about 300 per year, but providing navigation services. Wonderful, perfect, that, that clears up the question. Just mental health services makes one think counseling, right. not necessarily mental health service navigation. So thank you. Thank you, any other questions? Yeah, Commissioner Sparks. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I did have a question. I'm all for anything that has to do with mental health, <coughs> especially with our children. Um, because I believe that that's the foundation with our families. So I'm looking at the grant letter from Blue Cross Blue Shield, and it had December 7th, 2022. Are we too late? 
uh, or will we, I know in the grant world, things can kind of move slow or fast. So are we still on target for that? Yes, we can, um, we can file an extension for them. I mean, they say that, but then we didn't get like an agreement until way after the fact. Okay. So um, you're right. I mean, it, it doesn't usually fall within their timeline that they have. So we don't anticipate probably beginning to use those funds until July. Oh. Um, and that's, I mean, that's fine with them. It's a two year kind of a rolling two years. Mm -hmm. So yeah. And I have one more question, may I, Madam Chair? Yes. So when we talk about the, the navigation uh, and the 600, that could include the parents and then maybe three children, or um, that, does that specifically state just for children? No, usually it's the parents and the children. Okay. So I mean, to, to help the parents navigate for their child, mm -hmm. so that's that would be included in that count. Okay. So that number could build up relatively quickly. Right. Right. Really deal as a whole family program. Right. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your work on that. All right, any other questions or concerns? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say yes. 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 All those opposed, please say no. Motion passes. All right, our next item on the agenda also comes from the Health Department, and it's from the Lakeshore Regional Entity COVID-19 Block Grant Supplemental. Action requested. Recommend to the Board of Commissioners to approve an amendment to the Lakeshore Regional Entity, or LRE, Prevention Services Grant for 2022-23, Accept and appropriate $82,431 to the 2022-23 Health Fund budget and authorize the board chair or designee to execute the grant agreement. Approve extensions, amendments, and increases to the grant appropriation not to exceed 15% of the original award. The LRE COVID-19 block grant supplemental will be added to the Prevention Services Grant to fund a messaging initiative to increase awareness about the risks of using marijuana, alcohol, or prescription drugs and driving. The primary method of message delivery will be through social media using platforms such as Instagram and Snapchat to reach 16 to 34 year olds who may be more likely to use a substance and drive. To reach the broader community and those that may not use social media, <coughs> billboards will be used as a secondary method of message delivery. Metrics of all methods of message delivery will be tracked to evaluate the effectiveness of the messages and make changes throughout the campaign as needed. The funding will be used to support existing health department staff promotions and indirect costs. The grant award period is December 1, 2022 through September 30, 2023. Assistant Corporate Counsel will review and approve all documents as to form prior to signature. Great. Thanks, Al. Um, is there a motion for this item? Motion. Moved by Commissioner Sparks. Is there support. Support? support by Commissioner Wooden. Um, questions or comments regarding this grant? No? Commissioner Wooden. Thank you, Chair. Um, you know, I, I'm thrilled to see that um, some of our, our media campaigns are now shifting away from billboards and <clears throat> towards more direct media communications. I do want to ask, because, you know, uh, have we started to develop a, uh, an overall messaging concept? Because we've seen that often the, the fear-based communications <clears throat> for um, drug use, whether that's avoiding impaired driving or simply uh, substance use disorder, um, the fear-based approach has not necessarily been terribly effective, whereas other method other communication strategies may be more. And so I'm just wondering what has been, what thought has been put into that thus far, if any? So there has been a pilot that's been uh, already developed and, and tested uh, with, with good success by, by us in the LRE last year. Uh, in general, when we look at, at uh, modifying health behaviors with issues like this, we want to make sure there's, there's four ingredients in that message. One is that severity is communicated, so people are very clear that, uh, that in fact, the consequences of going down this path do have severe con consequences. Secondly, that they, in fact, are vulnerable, uh, and especially with the younger population, that can be challenging, uh, expressing and communicating that they have some vulnerability here that they're empowered, and empowerment's an important part of the message, that there's, they're empowered to make other choices that are better uh, and can avoid risk and keep them on a path to, to the bright future that they want. And then that the messenger is someone that they can relate to, and that's an important point in this also, is making sure that the, the, the media that's used and the messengers are people that they can relate to and that they have trust in. So we try to make sure those four ingredients are contained therein. And we've seen great success in the past with that sort of uh, model uh, as it relates to tobacco, and alcohol and other substance uh, that, that we're concerned about. Uh, so we'll make sure that we do that uh, going forth with this one as well. 
Um, I just want to make sure that uh, this grant started December 1st, 2022, that we get our extra time in because we haven't started it yet. <clears throat> As Commissioner Wooden said, is there already something in place so we can just go? There, there already is. And this, again, is a continuation of a project that we started last year with the LRE. So uh, there, it has been in place. Uh, this is going to make sure they continue strongly through the rest of this year. And we will probably have some billboards with this one as well, but that really, uh, to Commissioner Wooden's point, is, is a secondary and less uh, effective. We really want to focus on where, especially those young people, where they're getting their information. All right, questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say yes. 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 All those opposed, please say no. Motion passes. Next item on the agenda, also from the Health Department, is the Michigan State Police Comprehensive Opioid Abuse Site-Based Program Grant. Action requested. Recommend to the Board of Commissioners to approve the Michigan State Police Agreement, accept and appropriate $100,000 to the 2022-23 Health Fund Budget for the Comprehensive Opioid Abuse Site-Based Program Grant, the COAP Grant and authorize the board chair or his designee to execute the grant agreement, approve extensions, amendments, and increases to the grant appropriation not to exceed 15% of the original award. The health department has received a $100,000 grant from the MSP to implement and expand the community overdose fatality review team in Kent County, that's the OFR team, and to evaluate COAP projects and share results with the OFR partners and the MSP. The evaluation of COAP projects will include data collection of overdose deaths as identified by the Kent County Medical Examiner. The list of deaths will be shared with each partner of the OFR team so that any interaction the partners may have had with the cases can be shared with the entire team. Confidentiality statements are signed by all members. Prior to the OFR review meeting, the Health Department will select two to three cases that will be thoroughly reviewed and discussed by the entire team in order to identify the risk factors in each case and suggest improvements that may prevent similar overdose fatalities in the future. A lead agency will be identified to develop and present action steps to the OFR team for each improvement recommended from the review. The health department will monitor the work of the lead agency, lead agencies. The grant covers the cost of the existing health department staff who will facilitate the OFR team contractual payments to OFR partners, software costs for data management, and all indirect costs. The grant term is January 15, 2023 through September 30, 2023. Assistant Corporation and Council will review and approve the agreement as to form prior to signature. Thanks, Al. Is there a motion for this item? So moved. Moved by Commissioner Green. Is there support? Support, support by Commissioner Oliver King. <laughs> to say that. All right. Questions or comments on this particular grant? Commissioner Antor. Thank you, Chair. I was just curious about, um, it seems like a few years ago we were talking about vending machines that they were setting up throughout the county with um, overdose meds that you can get. Is that program still intact and has it been successful? Um, is there a way that we can measure the effectiveness of that, I guess? So uh, it, it is growing. In fact, we just recently had one placed in front of the health department a few weeks ago. Um, I think it's probably too early to measure how uh, how effective that program in itself has been. Overall, uh, we have seen our, our overdose numbers come down uh, from I think it was 2017 when we had our worst year at I think 135 deaths. We've seen it come down a bit since then. Um, still way too high, and it's still a huge priority for us. But um, but there's been a lot done by all the partners in the opioid task force between Lockstone distribution and a lot of different ways, including the vending machines, um, trainings, uh, some improved policies, uh, and availability in Lockstone at pharmacies and elsewhere in the community have, have really also, I think, made a difference. Um, but I would say that the vending machines, we think they're useful. Uh, we have found uh, and heard of people gaining access to Lockstone and having it ready. Uh, in that way. It's hard, though, really to measure uh, with any strong um, evidence to say that it was responsible for such a proportion of, of uh, improvement. Is there a shelf life on that product in the vending machines that you have to cycle through? There is. Through? Yeah, and we work uh, with the Red Project, and they, they make sure that they, they maintain that, and they're uh, swapping them in and out appropriately. Okay. Just one more question. As far as fentanyl in Kent County, um, have we seen the increase that they're seeing across the country? Um, have we? We have. And uh, do we, if we recognize the source, why all of a sudden 
it's been become such an issue. Um, and yeah, I would have to defer answers about the source uh, to uh, perhaps uh, law enforcement. But from the medical examiner's uh, reporting, we certainly see that fentanyl is, as I think lately, the majority of our opioid deaths involve fentanyl. And that'll be part of the work of, of this group as well, this, uh, this review team, to look at what proportion the changing dynamic of overdose. There was a time where it was largely prescription-based, and then we saw heroin, and we've seen um, other forms of, of this large opioid family contribute, but now fentanyl is a growing concern and the growing proportion of those deaths. I had heard over 100,000 deaths potentially last year in the United States from fentanyl. I, I can't say. Okay. Uh, I could find that out for you. Confirm yeah, I'd be that. curious. That's what I'm hearing, but you, you, you never know. Depends on who's given the numbers, I guess. So, thank you. All right. Any other questions or comments on this particular item? Commissioner Sparks. Thank you, Chair. All right. The, the medicine that is in the machines, is that Narcan? It is. Are the, okay. So is that free, made available? It is. Okay, yep. to them. And do they work together with our FAN community, the Families Against Narcotics? We do. To, yeah, okay. they're absolutely part of the larger um, community that has pulled together and, and formed both the Opiate Task Force, which includes uh, representatives from FAN, includes uh, the prosecutor's office, sheriff's department, includes pharmacies, hospitals, really... I think it's something we should be proud of is this cross-disciplinary uh, effort uh, to build that task force and has had some, I, I think, some real good results in the past uh, five or six years. Okay. All right, questions or comments? All right, seeing none, all those in favor, please say yes. 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 All those opposed, please say no. Motion passes. Next item on the agenda, um, we have a series of action requests from the Drain Commission office. So the first one, item number six from the Drain Commission, is regarding Big Brower Lake. Action requested. Recommend to the Board of Commissioners to approve the plan of the Drain Commissioner to amend the established lake level order for Big Brower Lake and instruct the Commissioner to perform any further services that are necessary related to maintaining its normal lake level consistent with the requirements of the Michigan Inland Lake Level Act 307. An inland lake level order has been established for Big Brower Lake pursuant to the Michigan Inland Lake Level Act 307 of the Natural Resources Environmental Protection Act. The Kent County Drain Commissioner, as a delegated authority, maintains the water control structure on Big Brower Lake pursuant to the requirements of Act 307. There is a need to amend the lake level order for Big Brower Lake to reflect a survey elevation aligned with the NAV D88 datum, that's the North American vertical, vertical datum of 1988, which would allow the drain commissioner to maintain the established lake level and for the protection of the natural resources. State law requires that an expenditure of more than $10,000 for the maintenance and repair of a lake augmentation well or water control structure receive the approval by resolution of the Kent County Board of Commissioners. All costs associated with the activities authorized above shall be reimbursed by the Lake Level Special Assessment District to the extent permitted by Part 307. <coughs> oh. <laughs> that's oh, it. that's it. Yeah. All right. So is there a motion for this item? So moved. moved by Commissioner Coleman. Support. Support by Commissioner Hildenbrand. Any questions or comments? We do have the Drain Commissioner Yunker here today. Commissioner Antor. Yep, he's right in the front. Well, I can. <laughs> Good to see you. That's a lot of paperwork. So I'm just thinking, can you just give us a thumbnail? Um, there's a lot to digest. Madam here. Chair, can we take up all of these in one swoop because they all pertain to the same issues? I think the discussion could be generic, yeah. but we do need separate votes under the yeah, under, that, all right. under okay. part 307. All right, so that's I think fine. if you want to have all the questions together, that's one thing, but then we'll have to go through the motions, supports, and votes yep. independently. Yeah, otherwise we'll yeah. be here all morning. Why don't we um, start, yeah, we can discuss this motion and any questions pertaining to the other ones. Yes, there's, that's there's fine. a little uniqueness on all of them, but nothing major. So I'll give you just a quick history. Uh, last year, the state Supreme Court made a ruling on a case brought before them that said all lake levels will 
go by the description of their lake level. All right. So we have lake levels that are back way before I was even birthed into this world. And that language was very general. And it said that the lake level would be set as it was read in, in, in the uh, order. But there was fluctuation from seasonal. In the summer it drops, and the winter and stuff it freezes, in the spring it's high. But what the Supreme Court said is we will or we must maintain at the level set by the court. Unless your language says flexibility is allowed. So after that ruling was set in place, it put everybody in kind of a frenzy. What are we going to do? So we was sat down, went through 20, all 26 of our lake levels. Now the lake levels are the drain commissioner's responsibility. They're not mine. I'm just given the wonderful opportunity to maintain those levels and what it takes to maintain them. So we took a review on all 26 of our lake levels, and I am happy to say that 20 of them are in good shape. The attorneys believe that we shouldn't have a problem if we did get challenged, but these six, we have a problem. So we're, we're now bringing those for your permission to go back to court and get these reset. And what we're setting is the language will reflect that there is flexibility, because some of these have outlets, but not any way to supplement the water. Some of ours have wells that supplement the water, and we have one particular supplement, but won't have an outlet. And that's being worked on. That's a $2 million project going this year. So we get an outlet for this lake. Uh, so we have a variation out there, but the language is good, but these six. So this language will better define the flexibilities that we have to live with in so the county doesn't get sued. And it also, some of these have not been set with a district to assess for the maintenance improvements that have to be done on these lake levels. Most of these have dams, and you know we have to inspect those every four years. And any maintenance has to be done, has to be done, then we're assessed to the property owners. All our lake level, the 20 of them have a court established district, which is the property owners on the lake. These six, do not. That was never done back in the day. So these are like 80-year-old agreements. And so that has to be brought up to standard state law. So that's what these are doing, all six of these. Every one a little different, but in essence, those are the things that we're covering. All right, thank you. Questions, Commissioner Antor. Thank you, Chair. Um, 80 years is a long time. We have natural things that happen, um, maybe outside of the purview of the drains. Um, that cause lake levels usually to rise or fall, right? Yeah, last three years we had a real problem with high levels. Yeah, I was going to say most real of the problem. Are, yeah. So does that mean that the outlets are, are just aren't big enough <clears throat> at that point in time? They're otherwise intact. Right? Well, the the outlet these that had outlets were not a problem. It's the ones without the outlets where we had real problem. And we have a lot of lakes that aren't don't have lake levels that. It's up to the people are at their own risk with them. Is there any problems with any of them with the inlets or where the water is supposed to be coming from that maybe that source is no longer? Yeah, well, we had so much rain those three years, and so our aquifers were high. Yeah. So when we got rain, the water was coming up from the ground, and it was coming from the sky. It was a, the perfect storm. And I had several homes on some of these in lakes that we have no jurisdiction on. They actually got condemned. and. People had to move out. Okay, thanks. I was just worried about trying to fix what maybe nature's already yeah, you know, there's, spending yeah. millions of dollars on something that's inevitable, and maybe we, yeah. but good luck with all this stuff, Ken. If we do, it again, we have to work with the property owners on this stuff, so we don't want it coming back to you. We're trying to keep you guys from getting into troubles, and that's my job. So th that's what this is. These, these six are the ones that we have to get shaped up, so we don't end up before one of our honorables dealing with a personal issue with the property owner. Thank you. All right. Um, Commissioner Wooden. Thank you, Chair. So forgive me. I, I think when I first read this, I thought this was a different matter. Um, probably my mistake for not reading closer. So you're essentially asking us in these six resolutions with slight variation 
to allow you to go to uh, the circuit court to amend that lake's level. Yep. So exactly. that you are not having to reach an unrealistic level um, that was previously set. No, no, the levels are fine. That's another whole process. We aren't getting into that. We're just going in to make sure the language is going to coincide with the state Supreme Court ruling that they did last year. Okay. That's what we're doing. We're just correcting the language so that we're in line with state law. Gotcha. And um, do and uh, for instance, the Big Brower Lake resolution we're looking at, does that also include authorization to augment or um, uh, provide proper outflow? Or is it just that setting of the new level? It's just that setting. That, that lake in particular, that weir, we did some maintenance two years ago and redid that. Uh, but we didn't have to go to court because everything stayed the same. It was strictly a maintenance project. Unless we change something, that's a process of eagle permits and then going to court for changing the, the level. And that's, that's expensive and extensive. We had two of them last year that they wanted to change, the people did. And that took about a year and a half to get through. So this is just simply lining the language. These six do not align with the state Supreme Court ruling. Wonderful. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Commissioner Sparks. Is it safe to say in 80 more years because of climate change we'll probably be back here again? No, I, I, years. Yeah, no I, don't, I don't think so. We're, you know, if we have a project that comes up that we have to modify the outlets, most of these are natural outlets, so there's not much that you really do with those. Um, it's, it's, if they have a set lake level, then we'll build a weir. It's like sometimes it's a full dam. Like Wabas's Lake, we have a full-fledged dam there. Um, and then we have some that just have a cement wall. We call that a weir. And, it, and the top of that concrete wall is set at the level that's been established. So the water gets to the top of that cement and just flows over to a natural flow. Um, and so unless that is changed, and that's a court process again, and a, and a study from, with Eagle, that you just don't change that level without knowing the impacts. Yeah. All right. Our next question is Commissioner Green. Thank you, Chair. Um, thanks, Ken, for the extra information. Appreciate it. Um, my only question is, um, well, kind of twofold. We are establishing assessment districts for these six that do not currently have them, correct? Correct. Okay. And then my only other question is, you know, w this is coming to us because of the cost, you know, the statutory um, limit on that ten thousand um, dollars. What, if anything, do you anticipate will be passed on to folks in the special assessment districts? Um, now let's. I know technically we're just talking about Big Brower, but like let's take that one for example because I'm just curious about what that end up coming through on their, you know, tax assessment down the road um, for that special assessment. <clears throat> that. Yeah, I think it was probably a little confusing. That's part of the law on things I have to come to you with if we spend over 10000 In this case, that's not on the table. We're not spending over $10,000 on these. We have some legal fees, and we have to go to court, but there may be on a lake district maybe about 1500 to 2000 Okay. because we did all of them. It's one, we're going to court on all of these together as one package. The judge will rule on all of them at one time. Okay. So we're not having separate hearings for each one. Okay. So, so that's, that's, that was just a, a part of the law, why I have to come to you yeah, guys. So. Yeah, so that, um, so that might be the amount that gets passed along among the, the oh, those in the assessment owners. district would yeah. be, you know, maybe 1500 2000 um, yeah, that that would be total. So their their assessment might be maybe fifty. Sure. Yeah. 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 No. Bucks. No. I'm clear so, on that. Yeah. I just wanted to, just wanted to kind of yeah. get the parameters on what we were looking at yeah. for the cost. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We're not we're not in a major cost with this. Sure. Okay. Great. Thanks. All right, Commissioner Coleman. Thank you, Chair. I'm just wondering about, and if we're kind of taking all questions now, um, the Sand Lake where it's part Kent, part Montcalm. The resolution in the packet is like a Montcalm County Commission resolution, but then somewhere in there, I think it says that, like you're the designee for doing this. So yeah. I'm, I'm just curious, like, How's that what, what are we passing <laughs> in that Montcalm version here that we're voting on? Like, 
All right. And then what so, are you doing with regard to the, the two sides of the lake there? Well, it's, it's all Kent County, but part of the drainage district is in Macomb. So some of the land is there, but the water's in Kent County. So it's, it becomes two counties in, all right? It's treated as a inter-county drain. And so, um, it's, so we're going to court on it, but the assessment will be their drain commissioner will have to assess their people, their percentage of the cost, and we'll assess Kent County. That's, that's why they're in there. So it's, it's, a, it's a shared, but the judge establishes that when they do the final setting of the district. So the lake level, though, you're responsible for the whole. Yeah, the, yeah. The lake level is, yeah. okay. It's in Kent County, so we have the level okay. to maintain. Okay, thank yeah. you. All right, any other questions regarding um, the drain and the lake levels for the commissioner, or for Commissioner Yunker? All right, so how we're gonna do this is, um, this vote will be on the Big Brower Lake, item number six. And then um, for the following resolutions, we'll have Al read just the action request, not the entire um, description. So just the, the couple lines, <coughs> couple sentences. And um, if you have questions that come to mind during that time, we'll, we'll go through that. So item number six, um, let's see here. Let's have a vote. So all those in favor, please say yes. 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 All those opposed, please say no. Motion passes. So item number seven comes from the Drain Commission again and um, it's regarding Big Crooked Lake. Action requested, recommend to the Board of Commissioners to approve the plan of the Drain Commissioner to amend the established lake level order for Big Crooked Lake and instruct the Commissioner to perform any further services that are necessary related to maintaining its normal lake level consistent with the requirements of the Michigan Inland Lake Level Act 307. All right, is there a motion for item seven? So moved. Is there support? Support. Moved and supported. Any questions or comments on Big Crooked Lake? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say yes. 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 All those opposed, please say no. Motion passes. Next item on the agenda, um, number eight from the Drain Commission is regarding <coughs> Lincoln Lake. Action requested, recommend to the Board of Commissioners to approve the plan of the Drain Commissioner to amend the established lake level order for Lincoln Lake and instruct the Commissioner to perform any further services that are necessary related to maintaining its normal lake level consistent with the requirements of the Michigan Inland Lake Level Act 307. All right, thanks, Al. Is there a motion for this item? So moved. Moved by Commissioner Coleman. Support, support by Commissioner Hildenbrand. Any questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say yes. 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 All those opposed, please say no. Motion passes. Next item, number nine from the Drain Commission is regarding Little Pine Island Lake. Action requested, recommend to the Board of Commissioners to approve the plan of the Drain Commissioner to amend the established lake level order for Little Pine Island Lake and instruct the Commissioner to perform any further services that are necessary related to maintaining its normal lake level consistent with the requirements of the Michigan Inland Lake Level Act 307. All right, thank you. Is there a motion for this item? So moved. Moved by Commissioner Coleman. Is there support? Support. Support by Commissioner Wooden. Any questions or comments? All right, seeing none, all those in favor, please say yes. 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 All those opposed, please say no. Motion passes. Item number 10 is our next item from the Drain Commission. It's regarding Sand Lake in Montcalm County. Action requested. Recommend to the Board of Commissioners to approve the plan of the Drain Commissioner to amend the established lake level order for Sand Lake, Montcalm, and instruct the Commissioner to perform any further services that are necessary related to maintaining its normal lake level consistent with the requirements of the Michigan Inland Lake Level Act 307. All right, thank you. Is there a motion for this item? So moved. moved by Commissioner McLeod. Is there support? Support. Support by Commissioner Sparks. All those in, or any questions or comments? All those in favor, please say yes. 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 All those opposed, please say no. Motion passes. <coughs> Next item, number 11, is from the Drain Commission, and that is um, regarding Sand Lake in Kent County. Action requested. Recommend to the Board of Commissioners to approve the plan of the Drain Commissioner to amend the established lake level order for Sand Lake, Kent, and instruct the Commissioner to perform any further services that are necessary related to maintaining its normal lake level consistent with the requirements of the Michigan Inland Lake Level Act 307. All right, thanks, Al. Is there a motion for this item? Moved by Commissioner McLeod. Is there support? Support. Support by Commissioner Wooden. 
Any questions or comments? All right, seeing none, all those in favor, please say yes. 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 All those opposed, please say no. Motion passes. <clears throat> Next item, number 12, is from the Drain Commission, and it's regarding Ziegenfuss Lake. Action requested. Recommend to the Board of Commissioners to approve the plan of the Drain Commissioner to amend the established new lake level order for Ziegenfuss Lake and instruct the Commissioner to perform any further services that are necessary related to maintaining its normal lake level consistent with the requirements of the Michigan Inland Lake Level Act 307. All right, thanks, Al. Is there a motion for this item? <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> so moved by Commissioner Sparks. Is there support? Support, support by Commissioner Kalman. Any questions or comments? Commissioner Kalman. I'd just like to say impressive work by all three of you saying the name of this lake. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right, any other questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say yes. 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 All those opposed, please say no. Motion passes. So, Al, do you have that memorized by now, that little? I do, <laughs> yes. All right, now, next on the agenda is miscellaneous. Is there any commissioner miscellaneous? <clears throat> any questions or comments? Oh, Commissioner Sparks. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'd like to welcome you to our first meeting. You did a wonderful job. And we look forward to having you to lead us. And I'd like to say welcome to our other uh, new commissioners as well. Thank you. Yeah, we have. Get in there. Yes. Hey, sometimes it's just kind of watch and learn as you go, so that's totally understandable. Um, we try to be, um, you know, professional and concise in what we have to say here. If there's questions, you know, please contact me ahead of time and we can, you know, sort any concerns out, but always be ready with questions here today. You know, the drain commission stuff, it's not always um, something that you and I and, you know, our colleagues deal with on a regular basis, so it's good to learn something new and how the different levels are set and um, different laws involving that. So thanks for joining us today, Commissioner Yunker. Um, any other commissioner miscellaneous at all? Commissioner Green. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, I wanted to echo um, Commissioner Sparks' welcoming comments. I also wanted to say I was going to bring it up earlier, but thought we should get through the item. Um, but on the issue of the opioids and the uh, Narcan Naxalone, um, Director London mentioned working with the Red Project. Um, they do a great job of getting that Narcan out. If you work anywhere or, you know, live anywhere where you come into contact with folks that may be really anybody, it's because the opioid, opioid issue has become so prevalent. Um, you can get free Narcan. You can do training online on how to administer it. Um, I encourage you to look into that um, because uh, you really can uh, save somebody's life if you have that. So um, that's my two cents on that. So thank you. Thank you. And the, you know, Narcan, Naloxone, it's really in amazing how it can bring someone back. Um, you know, it's not usually just the administering the first dose. You may have to do more than one. So, but it is really incredible how that has um, changed our community and given people, you know, another chance. So, Commissioner Antor. Just my two cents on this. It's very important. It's great that we have that. It also can be a problem, though, when people think, I can do this, I'll just take something. So we have to address that as well, because sometimes when you have a solution, it uh, that kind of helps exasperate it because you think I can do this, I'm just gonna pop a narcan on the next thing. You know what I mean? It's, it's something I think that we have to be aware of. I think we definitely could use more mental health in our community and understanding <laughs> of um, the opioid crisis. So it's you know best that we have our all you know, hands on deck and everything we can in our toolboxes. So, any other questions or comments, Commissioner Wooden? Not to keep us longer. Um, you know, while I can understand that 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 logic, I, I do think it's important to remember that people who have substance use disorders just do not have the same uh, view of cause and effect like those of us who do not have a substance use disorder, and that's the crux of that matter, right? Someone who uh, is facing a substance use disorder, is facing an addiction to opioids, may not necessarily have that same responsive, resi that same response to an, an incentive structure like you're talking about. And in the end, we've seen more and more that whether it's sobriety requirements and housing or um, making sub, uh, you know, requiring sobriety prior to getting mental health services, those end up not getting folks on the path they need to be to lead a healthy life. And the harm reduction model that, that 
available Narcan presents ensures that as someone is hopefully, uh, as someone will hopefully move towards a journey of sobriety, that they uh, have resources and, and tools available to, to keep them alive. Yeah, All right, could thank I just... you. Any other questions or comments? No. Commissioner Coleman. I want to apologize for my tardiness this morning. I got caught up behind a, a traffic accident on the highway, but I, I was reminded, you know, watching the state trooper come by and even the MDOT aero truck, um, just when you're in that situation where you're in an accident or some other type of emergency, uh, just how amazing emergency services um, and first responders are uh, in our area and, and how important it is when you're in that situation. So just reminded of that and want to express my thanks to all of those who do that hard work. Any other questions or comments? All right, seeing none. Our meeting is adjourned and our next meeting will be on Tuesday, January 24 at 8.30 a.m.